the West Meadows. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us today, whether you are on site or online, because we believe that God wants to do amazing things in your life and in the lives of those all around you. So let's worship him together now. Good morning, church. Let's stand and sing together. your heart, what stirs your soul, what matters come to mind, the cares you keep, the thoughts you think, it's not all wasted time. Seeking you will find Joy still comes in the morning Hope still walks with the hurting If you're still alive and breathing Praise the Lord Don't stop dancing and dreaming It's still good news worth repeating So lift your head and keep singing Father finds the child inside we left for growing old. Awake, 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 my soul. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive. Let everything praise the Lord. In the working, in the waiting, let it praise the Lord. In the blessing, in the breaking, come on, praise the Lord. In the dying, the rising, let it praise the You're still alive and breathing. Praise the Lord. Don't stop dancing and dreaming. There's still good news worth repeating. So lift your head and keep singing. Praise the Lord. Joy still comes in the morning. Hope still walks with the hurting. If you're still alive. Good morning, church. Firstly, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, grandmothers, and mothers in Christ. It's great to have you all here and those online as well. Now let's continue with our time of worship by starting with scripture from John 16, 33, where Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. There's truly no one like our God because he is the only one who has overcome the world, so let's praise him for that together.
water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome power Into the darkness to shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is here God is with us, so nothing can be against us. Amen. And if our God is close, then He could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is close, then He could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Joy, 
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there's peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want 
just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Let's shout his name together. Shout Jesus from the in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Sing it out. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name indeed peace when we are in the presence of Jesus. When I was a little kid, I was always afraid of our basement. It was dark, and the light switch was just far enough away that I had to walk through the darkness to get there, and it scared me. But I'll always remember the little phrase I would say to myself to make it through. I'd say, I'm not afraid. I'm on Jesus' side. No, I'm not. Saying this little phrase didn't take away the darkness but it helped remind me that Jesus had power over darkness and that I could put my trust in him. As we read earlier in John 16, Jesus Christ alone has overcome the world. Even though we will have trouble, 
because of Christ's victory over sin and death, we can take heart and know this peace that he offers. So let's take this last song to praise Jesus for the hope and peace we find in him alone. be seated. Today on Mother's Day, we want to focus our time together in prayer for them. Prayer for a mother figure in your life, for a grandmother, for somebody of importance in your life. And so may you join me as we continue to worship in prayer. God, we come before you continuing to lift you up, continuing to recognize your goodness for us. 
and the blessing that it is to have mother figures in our lives, to have moms, those that care for us and model your love, your compassion, and your diligence in all that they do. And God, while we praise you in that, we can still recognize that today is not always a happy day for some. For there are moms that have entered eternity too early. There are some that are gone, and there are some that that didn't have moms or, or maybe haven't had the ability to be a mom. Yet, God, we know that you can enter into those times and provide comfort. For you're the God that can comfort in all situations. And truly, it is your love that they model for us, and so they can lean into you in those moments. But God, we continue to lift them up. May they, may they be spurred on. May they be encouraged. May they be further developed in their knowledge of you. And God, we praise you for that. But God, we ask that you continue to sustain us all today. Continue to fill us full of the Holy Spirit so that we may go out this week and encounter the world so that they may see you. They may experience the new life that only comes through you. For you are the God that surpasses all understanding. So use us, a fallen human, to impact the world in an amazing way. God, we yield all we are. Everything that we have is yours. We pray these things in your holy, mighty name. Amen. Well, right now, we're actually transitioning to a child dedication, and so it's one of these amazing things that we get to do here as a congregation where we get to recognize some of the literal new life that is in our midst here at West Meadows, and what a fitting day. Mother's Day is a good day to do child dedications. It's almost like we planned it that way, right? And so it's a volunteer, a voluntary act of worship that these families are partaking in, And it's a way for the parents to be able to praise and declare their gratitude to God for the blessing of the children in their lives. And so it's a covenant that they will enter into with God and before their church family to submit to his will and to submit to raising kids up in such a way that they can be taught the ways of God. Not only that, but they they want to model it. They commit themselves to furthering their walk with Christ as well. And so We want to kind of dig into some scripture too. This is not just a a thing that we do because we want to, but it is is scriptural. As we read in the Psalms 127, it says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children who are born to people when they are young are like arrows in the hands of a soldier. Blessed are those whose quiver is full of them. And this is a time when they can be sharpening themselves, sharpening their children as well. And so I want to introduce the folks that are behind you. You may not know them. And so, oh, look, I thought I was going to have to say that these kids are at Sunday school, but they're back. All right. This is an audible that was audibled out again. All right. So this is Thomas and Rukia, and then this is Shem, Solomon, Belly, and then this little guy who is doing his best to stay awake. Sermon hasn't even started yet. Uh Uh-oh. Is Samuel. All right. And so this is the Hamid family right here before me. And so they have chosen a verse for young Samuel um, that they want to read for us. And so I have it in front of you in case you can't see it right there. And then I'll give that to whoever wants to read it. Right here. Yeah. Uh, But Jesus said, suffer little children and forbidden them not to come into me. For such a thing, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Very good. That's found in the Gospel of Matthew there. And then we have beside me here, we have Matthew and Kimberly, also known to me as Matt and Kim, in case that was too formal for them. Um, and the last name is Wiggins. And we have little, little Marshall right here. Yeah, there he is, smiling. Very good. Right on cue. We practiced. We practiced in the foyer. And this is little Isla right here as well. And so they've chosen a verse uh, for Marshall, and this is what it is. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. What a fitting verse for a, for a newborn. And so now we enter into the time that are some vows of dedication that we want to walk through. And so we believe that each child is a gift from God, a person made in his image with a soul that will continue forever. 
the destiny of that enduring life is significantly shaped by the hands of these parents right here before you. And so you've come to this service to publicly dedicate yourselves to the holy task of raising your children, which you are already well-versed in, I think. Therefore, I will ask you to declare this purpose by responding to the following three vows. Before God and this church body, do you commit yourself to be growing Christ followers through your devotion to God's word, to prayer, to involvement in worship and service, and your consistent Christian life, so that you will lead your child in following Christ? And do you also recognize and solemnly declare your dependence upon God for wisdom, help, and the blessing you will need to guide and nurture your child? And do you dedicate yourself to the holy task of parenting and to providing a home in which your child will be encouraged to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior early in life and as a follower of Jesus, seek to know and do God's will? The Word of God clearly places the primary role of spiritual development on the household. However, as their church family, you will all play a supportive role in helping to equip and instruct these children here through your words, through your example, and through your service. And so in this time, I bring this charge before you as the congregation as well. So do you, as their spiritual family, commit yourselves to loving and supporting these parents in their task, as well as being examples of godly living before their children? If so, say, we do. Amen. So now I'm going to pray a blessing over each child, and so I'm going to step in front here and go around, and I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to block, uh, maybe I won't block you, I'll go right here. (laughs) This is good? Yeah, I'll get right into the family picture. We're part of a spiritual family, right? And so I'm going to pray a blessing over Samuel. Please pray with me. God, may you be with Samuel as a constant in his life. Lord, I pray a blessing over him that he may not be hindered in any way from coming to know you in a personal way so that he can become an amazing man of God who seeks first the kingdom of heaven in all that he does. Lead and strengthen the family. Strengthen Thomas and Rekia as they continue to guide Samuel in all that he does and as he grows. Help his brothers and sisters to be of great influence as well. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Perfect timing. Isla's back. Here we go. And so we're going to pray for Marshall as well. Please join me. God, we pray for Marshall that he would come to know the transforming power that comes through knowing Jesus. I want to pray a blessing over him now that he would be shaped by your presence in his life, that your good and pleasing will would be all that he seeks. Lord, may you equip and guide Matthew and Kimberly as they shape and influence Marshall Daly as well. Help Isla to be a great big sister for him. Amen. You guys are great. This is awesome. And so this was my first time doing that. Did you, could you tell? No? No, you couldn't tell at all, right? And so thank you for, just for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was great. And so it was, it's truly a blessing to have kids up here with us and in the pews amongst us. And we want to just celebrate some of that new life by showing you ways that you can experience new life with us here at West Meadows as well. Welcome to West Meadows. As we continue in our time of worship, we do so now through our giving to this morning's offering. If you're joining us on site, you can drop off your offering using the black boxes located by the sanctuary doors. Or if you're tuning in online, you can click the give button just above me for all of our available giving options. All your generous giving allows us to provide opportunities for you or someone you know to experience new life with Jesus. For example, if you're joining us here in person for the first time, we wanna encourage you in your worship experience. So we have a gift for you. Stop by the welcome desk in the foyer after service and we would be glad to give you one. If you've been attending the church for a while now and are considering getting more involved and connected with the ministries here, we'd encourage you to take a next step and attend Discover membership happening on May 23rd. 
This short info session will give you a chance to ask questions and learn more about what it means to call West Meadows your home church. On your way to church this morning, I'm sure you noticed the LRT is well under construction. New roads are being built and the area is showing signs of further development. With all of this taking place, it's critical that we understand how West Meadows fits into all of it. We'd like to invite everyone, especially if you are a member of the church, to attend the campus presentation on Wednesday, May 29th at 7 p.m. here at the church. The information presented will summarize one of the biggest challenges West Meadows has faced, but with it also come some of the greatest opportunities. If you're unable to join us in person, please register in advance through our website to receive a link to attend this meeting online. In the meantime, there's lots of opportunities to get involved and engage with the ministries here. Everyone is invited to attend the pastor's Bible study beginning this Tuesday evening. Seniors, you have a Lunch and Learn event this Wednesday with guest speaker Matika Ritter. And Zoomers and Boomers, you have a spring barbecue on May 25th. To learn more about all of these upcoming events, talk to Pastor Andrew in the Next Steps area in the foyer after service or go to westmeadows.org slash next steps. For now, let's hear this week's message. Well, good morning. Welcome to everybody joining us on site and online this morning as well. In particular, happy Mother's Day to, to all of the moms that are with us as well. Well, if you were with us last week, we had, uh, we had, a, had a great service. We uh, kicked off a new sermon series, but also after the service, uh, we met as a, as a congregation. The members got together, and for those of you who weren't part of that or weren't aware, we got together to discuss and to vote on calling Pastor Colin as our new pastor of worship arts. And so we're just really thrilled and pleased to announce that that was accepted by 98% of the membership. And so we have a new pastor who will be starting with us here on June 10th. And so June 17th, I, on, I think it's June 17th, on Father's Day in June will be Pastor Collins' first Sunday with us here today. So we're very excited in, uh, in that wonderful news that Pastor Collins will be here with us. But also last week we started that new sermon series on prayer. And as you see on the header behind me, we're talking about prayers that we need to be cautious about before we pray them because of how powerful that they can be. And so we're going to stick with that theme a little bit today, but I'm going to switch it up because today we want to talk more specifically about the power of a praying mom. Now, I'm still going to caution some people, though, about this one, but I'm not going to caution the moms and the grandmoms and the spiritual moms and the future moms about praying, I want to encourage you to continue praying. I want to encourage all of those ladies to continue fervently praying for us with an unwavering faith in God. You know who I want to caution? The people they're praying for. So I, I want to caution the people they're praying for because you, you don't realize this sometimes, but your mom's prayers, your biological mom, your adoptive moms, your spiritual moms, your, your grandmom's prayers are one of the most powerful things that she has. Now, your mom has a lot of powerful things in her arsenal. Like, for example, who remembers how powerful mom's spit is, right? <laughs> like, you have a little bit of dirt on your face? Gone. Like, in an instant, no matter what it was. Blueberry stains, gone, right? If you had a stain on your shirt, it's gone. That's what they put in those Tide pens, is, is mom's spit. <laughs> That's what's in there. You can get rust off a bumper with mom's spit, right? It's, it's powerful, but a mom's prayer is even more powerful. And I just want you to know this. If, if your mom, your grandmom, is, is spiritually going before God, if he, she's daily going before God, has the ear of God, and if she is prayerfully bringing before him you and your needs and your choices and your waywardness, just stop. Right? Just, 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 just give it up. Because your enemies and you and the barriers that stand in your way, they do not stand a chance against mom's prayers. Okay. So I want to thank all the ladies in our lives who do so much to, to love us and to support us and to encourage us. And yes, to bring us before the Lord in prayer. Can we, can we just take a second and thank all the moms this morning? Absolutely. Thank you so much. And we love you. You know, in, in pre preparation for this week, I did kind of a deep dive into an area that I, I didn't know I was going to head this direction on Monday, and it just, it just kind of happened. I went to this deep dive into different sermons and articles uh, written by some, some rather well-known pastors and authors like, like Tim Chalice and, and, and John Piper, people like that. And, and these articles and sermons about people throughout history, throughout time, within the church history, who have been impacted by the power and the prayers of their godly moms. 
and it was just so inspirational to me today. I wanted to take a few minutes that I have here and just, and just share with you some of those inspirations. And, you know, it all begins with kind of this an axiom we've all probably heard at some point along the way. You've probably heard this one before. Uh, behind every great man is a great woman. You heard that before? Yeah, we've heard that one, right? It's often this reference to a man's incredible wife. To an incredible wife. It was certainly true and certainly important. But I want to suggest today an equally true axiom, if maybe not even more so true, especially for us today, and it's this, is that very often before every great man and woman was a great woman. Now, I consider myself uh, to be uh, proud to count myself amongst many godly men and women who have a godly wife and mom. A wife who stands with me and a mom who stands with me but was even before me. And I know that they both pray for me. And they pray for the church. And they pray for you as well. And I want you to know that it makes a big difference. And today I just want to spend a few minutes looking at some of these examples. Examples of godly moms who through their prayers shaped their children. Shaped families. Who through their prayer even shaped churches and yes, even nations were shaped through these women and their prayers. And it's my prayer today that through these stories, these, these short stories that I want to share with you, that it will inspire and it will encourage all of us, but especially the moms, whether it's a biological mom, an adoptive mom, a spiritual mom, a, a grandmom, a soon-to-be mom, a hope-to-be mom, a scared-to-be mom, whoever that may be, I, I want to inspire and encourage us all to keep fervently praying for us. We need you to pray for us. With open hands of faith that I believe and I hope we'll see today through these stories has the power to shape the world according to God's will. And so we're going to begin today by highlighting a biblical example of this. The biblical example of the power of a praying mom found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. If you want to turn there in your pew Bibles, you'll find that on page 213 or in your own Bibles you can find that there. Just scan that code in front of you. Take it right to the pew portal. You'll find the sermon notes available for you right there. 1 Samuel chapter 1. And this is where, a familiar story to a lot of us, we find the story of Hannah. Now, who is Hannah? Well, we, we don't have any evidence that Hannah was well-known or, or wealthy or always put together or had exceptional strength. But, but what do we know about Hannah? We do know that she was a woman of faith and that she was a woman of prayer. And through her faith and through her prayer, God chose to display his power. Now, Hannah is this lady who was married to a man named Elkanah. Now, Elkanah had another wife as well, though, named Penina. And even though I will not even begin to consider and go into the challenges and the complications of having two wives, <laughs> the Bible does tell us about one particular area of tension that existed within this family, especially between these two ladies. And it's, it's this, that, that Hannah had no children, but you know, Penina did. And she was rather cruel on how she lorded that and displayed that over Hannah. And so as we're introduced to Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1, we understand this about Hannah. She has two burdens. Number one, she has the burden that she is desperate to be a mother. But secondly, she also has the, the burden of a fruitful rival who will never let her forget that she's not. And every year, Elkanah takes his family up to Shiloh to worship and offer sacrifices. And during the process of giving these sacrifices, he would give portions of the sacrifice to each member of the family so they could participate. But he gave a double portion to Hannah because he loved her. He, he cared for her. And I, I think he wanted to bless her and keep her eyes looking towards the future. Well, Penina sees this and she is jealous. And so in her jealousy, she provokes Hannah to the point where Hannah finds herself just curled up in a ball. And crying and isolating herself from everything and from everyone. But rather than turn against Penina, Hannah instead turns towards the Lord. And this is what we read in 1 Samuel 1. Listen to the simple, heartfelt prayer of a woman in anguish. Beginning in verse 10. Where it says this. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying this. Lord Almighty, if you will look on your servant's misery and remember your servant and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then she, your servant, will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used upon his head. The pain of the mockery 
the, the barrenness, the pain of the barrenness floods her heart and it leads her to her knees in prayer. You know, in a surprising way, sometimes we miss this when we read this story. It's, it's a pretty familiar story, but sometimes we, sometimes we miss this important lesson that's even in this first part here. You see, in a surprising way, we could say that anguish can sometimes be a great teacher. Anguish can be a great teacher. Because for some people like Hannah, anguish of this, this wished for motherhood. The, 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 for other people, it's, it's the anguish of the, of the pain of pregnancy and, and, and birth itself. And still of others, it may be later on in life where it's the sorrow of a child who wanders away from relationship or, 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 or rejects the love of God that's offered in Jesus Christ. But in these times when we feel the sense of anguish over parenthood, we, we have a choice. Hannah had a choice to either turn towards bitterness or she can turn towards God, towards the God who longs to answer prayers. And in some way, what we see in this story so far already is the story of other women. In particular, one woman I read about this past week, a woman named Monica. Monica, who was the mother of St. Augustine. St. Augustine is arguably one of the most important church fathers and theologians that has existed. But it starts with Monica. Monica is a woman who was born into a Christian home, and she was known as a woman of godly virtue. But then she was married to a man who was none of those sorts of things. And so Monica found herself as a young, married woman, having to endure a lot in life, including the harsh treatment of her husband, having to endure his adultery that he did not hide from her. And yet she endured these things with faith and with patience, and she turned her attention towards her three children. Of those three, Augustine gave her by far the most grief. <laughs> he was known as rebellious. He, he rejected every lesson and every ethic that she tried to impose, tried to, tried to teach him and, and move him towards. And then she had to watch in anguish as he not only rejected her teaching and guidance when he was younger, but then when he became a young adult and he chose a, a rather a, a hedonistic lifestyle. Devastating to a mother. Devastating to Monica. What was her choice? Her choice was not to turn towards bitterness. Her choice was to turn towards God. And history records how she earnestly pleaded with tear-filled prayers of anguish for her son. And then God answered her prayers. And over the course of time, God led Augustine to, to, uh, to a bishop of Ambrose who became a mentor for him. And through his mentoring and through the conviction of the word of God, eventually Augustine got to a point where he completely transformed his own life and he, became baptized. he was baptized with his mother present to witness and celebrate that time with him. And he would go on to become one of the, arguably one of the best known authors and professors and theologians and, and pastors within church history. And history not only records those parts of his life, but it lets us know this when we consider the story of him and his mother. Is that while Augustine could run, he could not outrun the anguished prayers of his mom. Which leads us to another truth that we actually find not only in his story, but in Hannah's story as well. Is this. Is that God delights... God delights in open hands of faith. Do you notice that's what Hannah did? H Hannah, in her prayer, she repeats a few words a few times. She repeats the word Lord twice, and she repeats the word servant three times. You see, in her anguish, in her anguished prayers, she did not forget that God is her Lord and that she is his servant. And so for Hannah... This was like an open hand posture that was further revealed through her incredible vow that she made. You see the vow in those verses where she said, if you will give your servant a son, then I, then I, your servant, will give him right back to you. I will give him back to the Lord all the days of his life. Now, a little caution with this. Hannah didn't find a loophole here to to how you coerce God to act according to your will. That's, that's not what this is about. This is about Hannah acknowledging that she is a servant and fervently praying with full surrender and with total faith to her Lord who she knows loves her and bids her to come with open hearts and open hands. And he loves to put gifts in the hands of his people who do that. God loves to put gifts in the hands of his people who do that according to his will. And that's what he did in this story. He blesses Hannah with a son. She names him Samuel. 
Because the name Samuel means she asked the Lord for him. And he blessed her with a son. And she was blessed herself, not only to have a son, but to spend the first few years of his life with him. But then when Samuel was old enough, this open-handed mother followed through on her vow. And she went to Shiloh, and she presented her son to the priest Eli to fulfill the vow. And she said this in verse 27 to, to priest Eli. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked. And so now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And Samuel worshipped the Lord there. I, I can't imagine how hard that must have been for Hannah to do that. Like, you can imagine the mixed emotions that are happening. Maybe it's in a small way, it's like when you drop a child off at college. It's similar where, where you're excited for what's ahead for them. And you know they have to forge this own path. That, that's good. And yet you're going to miss them terribly back at home. Or, or when, a, when a child gets married. And you're happy for the new stage of life they've entered into, but you have to take a step back as a parent. Now Hannah was able to go visit Samuel. And, and Scripture records that, every, that regularly she did. Every year she would go visit him. She did that. But it, it shows in this that, that sometimes a good thing to do is not always the easy thing to do. You know, in this vow of commitment that Hannah made would not be the last time a mother would make such a vow. Another lady in history by the name of Elizabeth Newton did the exact same thing in, in, in similar ways. You see, Elizabeth Newton is the mom of a name you might be familiar with, of John Newton. And Elizabeth was known for being gentle and caring and, and being a woman who had this warm, passionate prayers that she would offer up regularly. But she had a very serious issue as well. And the issue was that she suffered with tuberculosis. And she knew that while she had this great faith in prayer and for the Lord, and he had blessed her with children, that she did not have limitless amounts of time upon this earth. And she was not going to squander her time. And so she spent her days right up to her final day teaching her children about the word of God. And praying for them. In particular for John Newton, praying, earnestly praying that John himself would be called into the ministry. And John refers it back in his, own, in his own memoirs. He talks about this. He says, My mother observed in my early years my progress with particular pleasure and intent from the very, very first, from the very, very beginning, to bring me up in view of the ministry if the Lord should so incline. He knew right from the very beginning that his mom had wished and prayed and intended for him to be in the ministry. This servant prayed for her son to be called in that direction right to the day that she died. Now when she died, John took it very hard and, and history records how he distanced himself from those teachings and he actually committed terrible atrocities. But then one day the Lord answered his mom's prayer. Answered that servant's prayer. And John experienced God's grace in a profound way that led him to repentance to the point where he himself is also recorded as a wonderful preacher and teacher and abolitionist. And he's the one who would go on to write the words, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. The impact continues on. Beginning with his mother, Elizabeth. Well, while she was weak physically, she was formidable in prayer. And her prayer was a prayer of releasing her son to God's ministry. And it impacted the world. In Hannah's anguish, it led her to this open-handed prayer of faith in God. And she received the blessing from God. A blessing of Samuel, who also himself changed the world according to God's will. And for the furtherance of his kingdom. And we actually see that when we continue through the story. You see, there's this prayer of this, of this releasing a child. And we know this if you've journeyed through parenthood long enough. You know that as, as your child grows, life adventures grow as well. And there's these seasons of releasing them to the next adventure of life. But do the prayers stop? No, they don't. The prayers continue. Sometimes the prayers just get bigger as well. And so we see this in Hannah's story where her prayers grew. Where first she was praying for herself. And then God blessed her with a son. And she prayed for her son. And she prayed for her son at the temple. And now as we get to 1 Samuel chapter 2, her prayers actually go beyond the walls of the temple. And she begins praying for a nation. 
You see, if you're, if you're following along in your Bibles, we'll see in 1 Samuel chapter 2, it talks about the prayer of Hannah, the prayer that she offered when she dropped Samuel off at the temple. And we see in this prayer that she was carried along by the Holy Spirit, and she finds herself being caught up in something greater than she ever possibly could have imagined. And she prays that, that these words that really we consider to be prophetic, as she declares the role that her son Samuel will have for her and for her people. And in the final words that we see in this prayer, they're recorded in, second, in 1 Samuel 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. We read this beginning at the end of verse 9. She wraps up her prayer by saying, It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The God will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. You see, throughout this prayer, the Holy Spirit impresses upon Hannah as she prays this, that God is going to use her son Samuel. God is going to use Samuel to usher in the next chapter of redemptive history. That through Samuel, God will establish the kingdom for his people. Samuel will anoint kings. Eventually one king who is a man who will have a heart after God's own heart, who we know to be King David. That Samuel will call and anoint King David, who will sit on the throne that God has established over his kingdom, that that will begin a royal line that will continue its way all the way to Jesus Christ. Therefore, all people will be blessed through the ministry of Hannah's son Samuel, of whom she prayed for. An answer to a mother's prayer that was beyond her imagination and that would ultimately change the world through the lineage of the people that he would call according to God's will. It reminds me of one final story I'll share with you today. The final story of one more praying mom. A lady by the name of Amelia Hudson. Now Amelia was the daughter of a minister. And she was raised in a, a difficult time financially, but strong in faith. Strong in family. From the time she was a young girl, God had blessed her with that. And continued to bless her with a loving husband. Shortly after she and her husband James were married, they knelt down together and they prayed for a child. But even before they had conceived, even before the child was born, they prayed that if they were granted the blessing of a child, that they would dedicate him to the Lord's work. And that child, when he was born, was named after his father. He was named James Taylor. But for some reason, he always became known as Hudson after his mother's last name. Now, early in his life, he developed this keen interest in spiritual matters and in missional work. But then over time, as he got a bit older, he went to work in a bank. And while he worked in this bank, for the first time in his life, he experienced people that just openly mocked Christianity. And he was trying to reconcile that with his past experiences. And at the same time, he was introduced to materialism that this career afforded him. In his life, in Hudson's life, the lure of money and, and the pleasure that it afforded was too hard to resist. And so he, so he went in that direction, and his spiritual life started to lag behind until it failed. And he became known as not the, the faithful, mission-orientated man that his parents had known, but rather he became known in the community as a rather short-tempered man who isolated himself from those sorts of things. Now, Amelia knew this, and... She didn't break a relationship. She, she instead moved towards her son. She cared for him. She counseled him. And yes, she prayed for him. So much so that she was compelled one time to pray unceasingly. Like, like literally unceasingly until God assured her that her son Hudson was saved. And so she locked herself in a room. And she began praying and fasting. Believing that God would answer her prayers. And then all of a sudden, in the moment of her praying through this time of fasting and praying, locked in this room, suddenly her heart turned from pleading to praising, and she believed that her son Hudson had been saved. Now, at the very same time, Hudson was in a moment of kind of discontentment at home, and he wandered around looking for something to do, and he walked into his home library, and he found a small book that's become rather famous called Poor Richard. And Poor Richard is a short, like, six-page book, more of a tract than anything. And it tells the story of the misery of a rather worldly man who, who was living in that direction, but then thought, well, God couldn't possibly save a sinner like me. My, my sin is too great for God to forgive. And in this little book, Poor Richard, 
It comes to tell the story about how God's grace and how God's forgiveness is greater than any sin we could ever possibly commit. And, and through this, through his mother's prayers and through this story and this little book, Poor Richard, the Holy Spirit impressed upon him all that Jesus Christ had done to save Hudson. All that he had done to save him. And Hudson came to the realization that the only possible proper response to this is to give your whole life to the Lord. And so right there in faith, he knelt down and gave his life to Jesus Christ and promised to serve him the rest of his life. At the exact same time, his mother was elsewhere in the house, locking herself in a room praying for him. And in that moment, his life was transformed and a mother's prayer, a servant's prayers were answered. But then Hudson, giving his life to the Lord, knew that that had implications because he committed himself to missions. He trained to become a doctor. He started preaching. And very soon, he announced his plans to depart, to depart for China. And Amelia knew that she would never see him again. And so on the day of his departure, she went down to the docks with him. And she restrained her feelings, but she did not stop her prayers. And she released Hudson to the service of the Lord. And in his writings, he records that he never knew so fully until then what it meant God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son until he watched his mother slip away from the docks as he went off to China. He spent 51 years in China. He founded what's known as the China Inland Mission that has been in operation for over 160 years and still operates to this day. It has trained hundreds and hundreds of missionaries. Thousands upon thousands of people of that nation have come to personally know Jesus Christ. And it is him in whom our conference seminary here in Edmonton is named after. A seminary that I've gone to, that Pastor Andrew went to, and many here have attended as well. And that we have supported over the decades. And Hudson Taylor goes down as one of the greatest Christian missionaries of all time. A man that God used to change the world. But you cannot tell Hudson Taylor's story without giving credit to Amelia. His mom. Who prayed for him before he even was. She prayed for him. When he was, she prayed for him. When he struggled, she prayed for him. And when he was called to God's ministry, she released him and prayed for him. So similar to Hannah, who prayed for a son, who dedicated him to the Lord before he was born, who prayed in anguish for his salvation, and then released him to serve the Lord and was used of God to change the world. Through all of these stories and so many more I could share with you today, I, I want you, I want us to, to remember this, this saying, this quote that says, if you follow the greatest men and women of God back to their beginnings, you'll often find a mother on her knees praying. And so as I close this morning, I want to leave you with this encouragement, ladies. Keep praying. Keep praying. If you have a conviction in your heart, if you have an anguish in your heart, if there's a joyous moment taking place in your life, if you have a burden for others, pray. Pray with open hand, servant's heart. Bring it to the Lord who bids you to come to him, who we know that we need to come before when we have these things in our heart and in our lives, knowing that when we come before him and pray, that he will give us, and those we're praying for, the wisdom that we need, the courage we're seeking, the faithfulness to endure, and the strength to proceed. And a heart that is after God. Because the truth of the matter is this, you just never know, you just never know what God may do through you and through your prayers. You just never know the pastor or the missionary that he is going to call. You just never know the fighter of injustice or the mom and dad of the loss that he is going to send. You never know that you might be praying for the next church leaders, for the next generation of godly husbands and wives and moms and dads that our society needs. You just never know. You may very well be raising up the next leaders in the kingdom of God while you were on your knees praying to him for them. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you bless us in so many amazing ways. We thank you that with a God like you, we can not only dare to dream of what is possible through your empowering and through your guidance, but Lord, we dare to pray. We dare to pray that you can use such as us, the the feeble words and, the, and the, the desires and the thoughts of us, so that you can take those as offerings and you can use them and that power to them to change a life, to transform a family, 
Lord, to bring hope to a nation, to a people. Oh, Lord, help us to be people of prayer who believe in big prayers because we serve a big God. And we thank you specifically today, Lord, for the moms, the adoptive moms, the biological moms, the spiritual moms, the soon-to-be moms, the hope-to-be moms. We, we, we pray for them, Lord, and encourage that they would continue to pray that your blessings may pour down upon them and just run off to us and to our families. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand with us as we sing one last song.
Thank you. We have one more thing to do today. Can I just take a seat for just a moment? Thank you. You know, assembled before me here today is our Guatemala team and all of their prayer partners. And on this coming Saturday morning, they are going to head out on their, I want to call it an adventure, a mission, uh, an opportunity for being discipled and for sharing the love of Jesus Christ with people far from us here in Edmonton. I just want to say, first of all, that uh, thank you on behalf of this team. Thank you to this church family for the support, for the encouragement, through, uh, through just your words of encouragement, through your prayers, through your financial support that has made this possible. I personally feel very blessed to be a pastor among you, to see how you've supported these people and you've supported this mission. And it gives us hope for future opportunities to do this as well. So thank you so much for your participation in that. And that is actually somewhat relevant to the rope that they're holding here. You may be wondering about this rope that they each have in their hands. And that rope is symbolic of the connection that exists between them and their partners that are here with them, and also each and every single one of us. And it's a symbol that actually was originated with a British missionary named William Carey, who before he sent off on a missions trip to India, speaking to his supporters, he famously said, I will go if you hold the rope. And so today we are asking and reminding all of you as their supporters to hold this rope while they're apart from us in these days ahead. To further explain what that means, William Carey explained it through a poem that he wrote that says this, Our mission has placed us in, far, in lands far away for people who live without hope. You may not be physically with us today, but never let go of the rope. The language is different, the culture is new. At times, it's a challenge to cope. Some people around us don't like what we do, so never let go of the rope. We preach the good news where rarely it's heard, with people who stumble and grope. We trust in your prayers and the power of God's word, so please never let go of the rope. So before we send them off, I want to take a moment to pray for them. And we've got two of our board members who are also prayer partners who will uh, lead us in a word of prayer and then I'll close when we're done. Heavenly Father, uh, we bring these requests before you for this team. First of all, for their physical safety as they travel, as they serve, and as they explore but also for their mental, spiritual, and emotional safety as they work through the many challenges that they'll face and new experiences. Also, we pray for the success of the venture as they serve the children and the teen girls at the orphanages, that they bring joy, love, and hope in those situations and as they support the adoptive family with an improved home and food that they would bring success and also as a team that they are able to show unity of purpose that as they experience all that they're going to be seeing in the next few weeks, that they would be able to share love, to share joy, and to share hope in all of their circumstances. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, we thank you for every one of these team members who have uh, raised their hand and said yes to this, to this missions trip. Um, God, we lift them up to you. We thank you for their willingness and and Lord, as a as a community, we thank you for um, the faithfulness in, in fundraising and and uh, making this happen, getting to this point. God, I want to pray, especially for um, for their physical health right now. Um, Lord, I pray that uh, this team would be protected from illness and disease. God, if anyone is feeling sick right now, leading up to their their departure, Lord, that. Uh, you would bring healing, you would bring health, Lord, that these, uh, these team members would be present and would be alert and energetic and bring the, their full selves to this mission, Lord. Um, I pray also for, um, for
for this experience, that it would be um, a growing experience that would develop the faith of, of everyone going, Lord. Um, I pray that, uh, that these team members would, would not leave without being changed by encountering you um, and to be involved in your mission and, and your purposes on an international stage, Lord. Um, what a privilege it is, God. And I pray that each of these team members would come back with a renewed devotion to you, Jesus, um, and love for your, for your goodness and uh, knowledge of your faithfulness. Lord, and I want to echo what Peter prayed about unity, Lord, and um, just recognizing that each, each member comes with their own hopes and expectations and fears. And God, I pray that you would bring this group together in unity and, Father, that they would be centered on Jesus in your love, um, that they would be known and identified by the love they have for one another and for uh, the, the people there in Guatemala that they'll be working with. Um, thank you so much. For, for all you've done and all that you are doing and, and will do on this trip. We pray in your name, amen. Can I ask you to all stand while we finish praying for them? And Heavenly Father, as we send these people out, as we go as those who have this vision in our head of holding that rope, to continue to pray for them in the days ahead, to continue to think of them, to bring them before you, Lord, we just ask, Father, that you would be preparing their ways, whether that be through airport lineups and administrative details for a group such as this and then and just the the travel to get to that place Lord would you be the God of the details and those things that that would not stymie or frustrate their journey would you go before them Lord to prepare just tilled soil for their work for their hearts and for the words that they'll share that people may experience tangibly your love for them as practical needs and and, and, and connections through relationships are established. But then, yes, also, Lord, through the planting of the gospel of Jesus Christ, may opportunities exist for that. Go ahead of them, Lord. Prepare the way for them in those fashions. And, Lord, in their own hearts as well, may they go not with a, a sense of, of confidence. May they not go with a sense of, of sometimes, if just acknowledge it, a Western superiority. But may we go with open hearts and hands, acknowledging, Lord, that you are going to do a work in each of them as well. And through this, it will be formational in their lives, in their spirits, that they can come back and further instruct and teach us. We thank you that you use all these things for the furtherance of your word, of your name, and of your kingdom. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement for being with us today. So I want to leave you with a couple quick things before we depart from our sanctuary here today. Number one, as we do always, if there's anything we can do to encourage you through prayer, uh, these folks will be leaving in a moment, and there'll be room up here for you to come and uh, spend a word of prayer with myself. I would count it an honor to be able to enter into prayer with you for those things. Uh, secondly, ladies, as you leave, you're going to see some tables in the foyer that have a gift for you. Uh, please, uh, one per lady, <laughs> so there's enough. But also, uh, if you have a child that's in kids' ministry today, they're going to be bringing you an additional gift. And so uh, beware of that as you, uh, as you head out through the doors. And then finally, I just want to leave you with these words as you head out on this happy Mother's Day. That may we all grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. We'll see you next week. <laughs>